Covington, a 19th century village in Pennsylvania, is cut off from the outside. Villagers are warned to stay away from the surrounding woods where strange creatures dwell. Long ago, the village leaders and creatures agreed. Villagers stay out of the woods, creatures stay out of the village. They marked a boundary and gave rules on behavior and colors to where to keep the creatures away. After August Nicholson's son dies from an incurable illness, a young villager named Lucius Hunt asks the elders for permission to leave and seek medicine in the outside world. He hopes to find a cure for another villager, Noah Percy, who suffers from mental illness. However, the elders refuse Lucius' request. Lucius, seen as odd by the village, prefers solitude and rarely talks to others. When Kitty proposes marriage, he declines. Lucius is close to Kitty's sister, Ivy, who's blind and senses colors around people. Noah gives Ivy red berries from the woods, which makes Lucius believe the creatures there don't harm him. This strengthens Lucius' resolve to ask the elders again for permission to leave and seek help in the towns, believing he'll be safe like Noah. Lucius' second request is turned down, and his mother, Alice Hunt, advises him to stay home, fearing the dangers outside that took his father's life. Upset, Lucius confronts his mother about her feelings for Ivy's father, Edward, who's married. He also questions a locked black box she keeps, containing the elders' pasts. Lucius wants her to open it, but she refuses. The next day, Lucius patrols the village borders. Secretly, he crosses into the woods but hears only rustling branches. That evening, he talks with Ivy at the walker's house. Ivy reveals her sister will marry someone else and admires Lucius' bravery but warns against leaving. As Lucius leaves, Ivy mentions she's now open to suitors since her sister is marrying. Shortly after, an alarm sounds, signaling creatures from the woods invading the village. Lucius rushes to the walker's house and saves Ivy from being attacked by one of the creatures. The next morning, red marks are found on many doors in town. At a meeting, Edward Walker suggests the creatures feel threatened. Lucius admits his trespass likely caused it. He feels ashamed, but Edward praises his bravery. Sometime later, Kitty Walker marries Kristop Crane, and there's a celebration. During the festivities, children scream as creatures return to the village. The party stops when villagers find skinned animals hung on porches. The elders grow worried, and extra watch groups are organized. In the evening, Lucius visits Ivy at the walker's house. They confess their love and plan to wed, informing the elders the next day. The news spreads quickly, and Noah, disturbed, stabs Lucius. Later, Noah is found with blood on his hands. Ivy discovers Lucius unconscious in his blacksmith shop, unable to see his color. Noah is confined for his actions. Lucius is badly hurt, and the village's treatments aren't enough. Ivy asks her father to go to the towns for medicine. At first hesitant, Edward reveals a family secret. Ivy's grandfather was killed in the towns, warning her about their dangers. Edward shows Ivy the shed, revealing the suits made to scare villagers. He confesses the truth. Elders made up the creatures to keep villagers safe. Each elder moved to the village after losing someone, seeking a better life. He apologizes for lying and grants Ivy permission to go to the towns to save Lucius. After Ivy leaves, Edward tells Alice that supporting Ivy's mission is all he can offer, hinting at his feelings for her. He then informs the other elders about his decision, stating it's not just about protecting Kivington but also showing compassion. He believes allowing Ivy to save Lucius is the right thing to do, as they were victims like their ancestors. He emphasizes that it's up to the younger generation like Ivy and Lucius to carry on their way of life. Ivy packs supplies, including a gold pocket watch from her father. She's joined by Kristop and Fenton to go into the woods. Kristop gets scared immediately outside the village borders, despite wearing good, yellow clothes and Ivy's magic rocks. He returns home. Fenton stays for a day before fear takes over, and Ivy lets him leave. She continues alone. Ivy encounters a dangerous pit that nearly traps her. She hears a strange noise and feels a creature nearby, despite her father's words that they're not real. The creature charges at her, but Ivy uses her wits to lead it into the pit, where it falls in. Later, she discovers it was Noah in a costume. He found it, wore it, and got hurt falling into the pit. Noah stops moving. Ivy encounters a tall wall and starts to climb it. Meanwhile, village elders open their locked boxes, revealing mementos from their past. It becomes clear that Covington looks old-fashioned but is actually in the present day. The village of Covington was Edward Walker's idea. After his father's murder, he sought solace in a support group for people who lost loved ones to violence. As a history professor, he proposed creating a secluded village within the Walker Wildlife Preserve to protect its members from further harm. Covington was built deep within the preserve, surrounded by a tall wall. Measures were taken to prevent airplanes from flying overhead, maintaining the illusion of a rural, rustic setting. On her way over the wall, Ivy is surprised by a strange noise in a young man's voice. It's the siren on his vehicle. 
He's part of the patrol keeping people out of the preserve. Ivy is scared at first because of what she's heard about outsiders. But she senses kindness in his voice, and he offers to help her get the medicine. Ivy stays by the wall while the young man fetches the supplies and a ladder. She gives him the pocket watch as payment. Then, she climbs back over the wall and into the woods. Ivy comes back to the village. Rumors spread about her killing a creature in the woods. Noah's parents are devastated by his death, but Edward Walker offers comfort. He plans to retrieve Noah's body and claim the creatures killed him. He asks if they want to keep living in the village, and they silently agree. Ivy returns to the hunt's house with medicine, sitting by Lucius's side and reassuring him.